I'd like to welcome Shari Walsh to the stage. Shari uh, is a doctor uh, who's a psychologist, originally with the Queensland University of Technology, and some time ago was approached by the Australian Transport Safety Bureau to conduct um, an investigation into mobile phone use, um, the results of which are terribly interesting. There's no maths in this, but uh, I think you'll find the outcome different than what you were expecting. Shari, thank you for coming today. Um, obviously, in this particular commercial, there's a telephone ringing. And, uh, I don't know, since I was a child, I've always had that feeling that you just have to answer a phone. What was your experience when you, when you made that inquiry? When we think about how the brain functions, our brain learns by patterns that we develop as young children. When we're young children and we hear a phone ring, generally our parents would have stopped and answered it. And that sets in our mind an absolute precedence for a ringing phone. So it's very difficult when somebody hears a phone ringing or a text message being received to actually stop the automatic process of wanting to answer that phone. I mean, I, I looked at um, sort of the way people connect nowadays. I mean, I, I think, um, you know, back, back in when I was a teenager, which wasn't quite that long ago, <laughs> I'm sure these are L'Oreal Steel Grey highlights, um, but quite seriously, back when I was a teenager, if we wanted to contact friends, we would either stop at a call box or we'd go home to make a phone call. We didn't have mobile phone technology. But as I said in the beginning, that sort of evolution of personal electronic devices certainly has led to a, an environment where I have a, a, a sort of sense of belonging <coughs> to a much larger um, group of friends or a, and a stronger connection with a bond. Did you find that came out in your research? Yeah, my research focused on the psychological connection that people have to others via their mobile phones. And I particularly looked at young people aged between 15 and 25 because they're actually going through the developmental process. So young people, um, we all have, irrespective of our age, a need to belong to others. But young people have a heightened need to belong because as part of that they're developing their self-identity and getting an understanding of how they actually interact with others. So when mobile phones came on the scene, we actually now have a constant connection or a constant availability to those people who previously, if you'd said goodbye at the school gate, it was a little while before you saw them again. But they're always here now. And that's what's made it in some ways a much stronger connection for people because that pressure of the group is there, whether we're actually with the group or whether we're on our own, but have the group virtually through the, through the phone. So we've got uh, this, this inherent learnt skill, if you like, of answering a ringing phone, and now we've got a so sense of social belonging. Is that the case? Yes, yes. And particularly for young people who have um, an inherent need to conform to the group norms, whatever the group norms might be. I'm talking to teachers here, I'm sure you're quite aware, and the students that, that you work with, that they have particular patterns that they will um, make sure that their group behaves by. So one of the group norms that really struck me in terms of when I was looking at mobile phones was that if the phone wasn't responded to, if someone got a text message and they didn't get a reply very, very quickly, then that was against the group norm. And so they thought that they would be disliked by the rest of the group members or their friends wouldn't talk to them. They'd start making all these assumptions about what people were reading into that lack of contact. And that's a very big pressure for, for young people particularly to ignore. I mean, I know in a business sense, you know, if my phone rings, I'm concerned that I could be missing an important business call. It might be something of financial benefit to me. So is, is missing out on something relevant to, to younger people too? Yes, hugely. Um, they don't want to be left out of something that their friends are doing, particularly in these days where there's Facebook, everyone's constantly updating, or Twitter or Instagram. All of those... Um, applications are now available to us all the time on the phone. Even a few years ago, you would wait until you got home to actually access those. Now they're there all the time and it's being promoted. So when, when I, not me, sorry, if I was a young person or younger, I'll stick with you about the age thing, it wasn't that long ago. If, if I heard a message on my phone, the automatic question would be, what am I missing out on here? And that's a really difficult um, <coughs> pressure to ignore because people want to know what it is they're missing out on or they want to be sharing that information with their friends. So the combination is quite powerful. So in your research, if, if, a, if a young person's driving uh, and the phone rings, do they prioritise tasks? They'll answer the phone. 
fairly, fairly much was in research. It was interesting looking at the, the results of the clicker pad. Um, certainly my research found that for young people particularly, safety came, sorry, safety came last. Communication and connection to others was the really important factor. Um, and the fear of being fined or being in a crash or anything like that simply didn't register. And part of that's because people have this innate assumption that they're a much better driver than everybody else. So they won't have an accident and the other person is a bad driver. So if I use my phone in my car, I'm OK. And that's something that they just automatically assume. Now, um, as I understand it, your research involved getting a, a, a groups of young people together and of I suppose you wouldn't want to be distracted while you're doing the research, so you asked them to turn their mobile phones off? I did. What was the outcome of that? Uh, well, it was fascinating to me. I'm, I'm what would we call a functional phone user. I only use my phone um, because I have to occasionally, and I don't really like using my phone. I still get surprised when it rings. <laughs> um, when I would ask young people to turn their phone off, they would actually um, get highly anxious. And so we'd have to start doing some anxiety reduction techniques at the start of the <coughs> focus groups in order to help the participants to turn their phones off. Um, and that was absolutely amazing to me because it indicated the strength of this pull towards others that they feel and that absolute fear of not being um, included in something that their friends were doing. Um, they didn't care if it was their parents contacting them. That very rarely came up. It was really all about their friends. So, I mean, when I was a child, occasionally getting a smack for being naughty was the thing that we did. Um, some would say that's no longer socially acceptable. So is taking a mobile phone off a child a, a suitable punishment? What, what does that do to young children? I don't have young children. I'm probably quite... I'm glad that I no longer have young children. Um, for... One of the difficulties is children are getting phones a lot earlier and they're being given phones um, on the basis of staying safe and connected to their parents. That's not what they're using them for, but that's what they're giving them for. That's how a lot of parents rationalise it. So when you take the phone off the child, um, they can feel very socially isolated and withdrawn from their peers. And I hate to say it, but um, I was working you know, with people who were sort of 15 and above. A number of them would have a backup phone and um, a spare SIM card. So if their parents took their phone off them, they would have another device that they would still use. Thank you very much for coming along, Shari, and thanks for joining us this evening. Thank you.